Welcome back to RG Geek. Today we'll be comparing the upcoming Odin and Steam Deck handhelds to help you make a decision which one you might want to buy. This is more geared toward people who aren't too familiar with the handhelds. If you've been following this stuff for months, you will likely not learn anything from this video, but of course you're welcome to stay tuned. Obviously, when talking about a gaming handheld, the games are the most important. So given that Odin is an Android handheld and Steam Deck is a Steam handheld, it's obvious that those games will work best on it. So if you love playing Android games, you love playing PC games, your decision is probably already made up. If you want this for emulation, the light model of the Odin should play up to uh, PSP and 64 and Dreamcast, although I suppose it can also do some GameCube. And the Basin Pro should be able to play GameCube uh, perfectly and some Wii. And if you want more high-end systems like the Wii U and the PS3, then you probably want to go for the Steam Deck. Uh, I don't think it'll run PS3 perfectly, at least not all the games. It's also possible that Switch emulation will eventually work uh, decently on the Steam Deck. These are both great systems for game streaming. If you just want a game stream, I'd say the Odin Lite would be your best bet because of the price point. I've also seen confirmed that the Microsoft Game Pass will run on the Steam Deck. So it could also be your portable Game Pass machine. But they also can do the other side. So you can install Windows on an Odin, although your results may vary. I'd be a bit leery of that anyway, because uh, Windows 10 takes up about uh, 65 gigabytes with the OS alone. And so that means pretty much only the, that only makes sense with the Odin Pro. But then you're spending half your storage on uh, the OS. So you have to think, do you really want to do that? But I've been hearing reports now that uh, the PS2 emulation in Windows on the Odin is quite good. That really surprised me. And obviously on the other side too, if you want to play Android games on your Steam Deck, you can use Anbox. I don't have any familiarity with this, but I came across this during research for this uh, video. So looking at the price, this is where the, the big difference is. And I've been surprised lately of people saying, oh, the Odin is a little less than the Steam Deck in price. And it's like, no, it's about a third. So obviously they're two completely different price points. So obviously the Steam Deck will be more powerful. Deciding what you want is up to you if you're the kind of gamer who wants to play those high-end games and is willing to pay the money for it, then the Steam Deck is for you. But if you don't really play many PC games, you don't have a Steam library, you do a lot of cloud gaming, Odin may just be the better solution for you. Looking at the display, they're quite similar. So you've got the 6-inch 1080p display on the Odin with a 16:9 aspect ratio. Uh, touch display on both and on the Steam Deck you've got the 7 inch 720p the 1610 which is a bit better for PC gaming but with a lot of other games you'll get the black bars on the top and bottom some people consider the 720p screen to be a disadvantage but actually for PC gaming it's much better because you'll need much less processing power and PC games are typically expecting more powerful systems to run so I think the 720p was definitely a good choice if you're more interested in PC gaming. Oh, also for retro gaming, because most retro games, I mean, up through GameCube were 480p. So you don't need more resolution for that anyway. And note with the um, 512 gig model of the Steam Deck, you'll also have that uh, anti-glare etched glass. So if you often play outside or with the sun directly behind you, that could actually come in handy and be worth the upgrade. Looking at the size and weight of these models, you see the Odin is a lot smaller. You can look in every dimension, it's smaller. And it also weighs less than half the weight of the Steam Deck. So I would say with that, the Odin is much more portable. Like if I'm riding a bus or a plane, I would much rather reach into my bag and pull out an Odin than I would uh, this massive Steam Deck. <laughs> So I'd say since the Steam Deck is a bigger console, you'll have a more immersive experience. Although you may also get a bit tired holding it, or I've heard the joke, if you're lying in bed and you drop it, you may just break your nose. So, but, you know, that's up to you. Looking at battery life, it's really hard to compare these two handhelds because um, I'd say they both perform very similarly in terms of hours. It's really hard to compare battery life in these two models. Android games take a lot less resources to run than PC games. But that also means the Steam Deck has a bigger battery, so your playtime should be pretty similar on both these devices. I personally think you'll like the battery life in either device, and they both should be able to hook up to a USB battery pack to get extra time on them. If we look at the storage, we'll see the Steam Deck obviously wins out here. But note, you can use an SD card to expand your storage for both these machines. 
Although if you're looking to do PC games on an SD card, you may find it a bit rough. PC games are expecting much faster access to the data. But if you're emulating older games, then this pretty much is nil. Because if you think about it, a lot of these games ran on CDs or even older cartridges and their access time was so much slower than what you have today on an SD card. Having said that, if you look at the largest games available on these two platforms, let's say Google Play and Steam, you'll see that the Steam games are considerably larger. So if you get the mid-range model of the Steam Deck and you want to install Call of Duty Modern Warfare, that might not even be possible depending on how large Steam OS is and what updates come to it. You have to keep that in mind too, like what games you're going to be playing. Are you playing some of these huge games? It's also interesting to note that the three bottom ones, Destiny 2, Red Dead Redemption, and Hitman 2 are also all on Stadia. So if you want to save a lot of your storage space and you have good internet where you are, then you might also want to just play these games on Stadia and save yourself the hard drive space for other PC games that you can't play on Stadia. Also, I want to note really quickly that um, it was really hard to get this list for um, Android and Google Play. It's very typical that a Google Play game will say it's 50 megabytes, and then you download it and it's several gigabytes <laughs> after you start playing. So if we look at the CPU and the GPU, I'm not going to bore you with technical details here. So feel free to pause this if you really want to look over it, or I recommend just looking at technical specs of these yourselves. I'll also have a link in the show notes below for looking at the handheld, what I could call the ultimate handheld spec guideline. I think I just want to mention quickly that the MediaTek D900 is relatively new, so we don't have much knowledge about the chip yet. So we're waiting for um, YouTubers to get their hands on some of these and uh, run their own reviews. So if you want the more solid uh, tried and true, then the Snapdragon 845 is definitely the way to go. But it's possible that in time, emulator developers will learn more about the D900 chip and uh, be able to optimize for that. All of these have uh, active cooling. I don't have it on the Steam Deck, but it has active cooling as well. So that means that uh, if you have a phone with a Snapdragon 845, it's not going to perform as well as the Odin because um, when it starts getting warm, your phone will start throttling its performance, slowing it down, whereas Odin will crank up the fan and keep going. So obviously in RAM, the Steam Deck also outperforms the Odin, but you also have to keep in mind if you're playing PC games, 16 gigabytes is kind of like what it's expecting to run at. Whereas if you have an Android phone with four gigabytes or eight gigabytes, that could be a powerhouse for a lot of Android games because they're really targeted toward much weaker hardware. So I think the Odin is going to be a beast when it comes to playing Android games. We've got Android 10 and Android 11 on the Odin. One thing that's interesting is that the D900 is a new chip. So to become certified, they actually had to only allow Android 11 to run on it. But uh, Android 10 actually has some benefits for emulators in the way that uh, the system treats uh, file and folder permissions. I don't actually know all the details in that because I'm not an emulator developer. That's what I've been hearing. So I personally would prefer to have Android 10 on an emulator dedicated handheld. Can it run Windows? It can run Windows, but uh, your results may vary. I was hearing issues of Windows running on the light and not recognizing uh, that it was actually a landscape device. Hopefully it'll be tweaked even before we get our units in November and December. The Steam Deck runs on SteamOS 3.0, which is Linux, and uh, this will also be able to run Windows. And just keep in mind what I said earlier, Windows 10 takes up about 65 gigabytes alone. So if you want that uh, base model, don't expect to run Windows on it. So you really have to think, do I really want Windows on my device? Or am I happy with uh, the games I can play on SteamOS? So first of all, we have no information at all about the Steam Deck dock. As for the Odin dock, it costs 43 euros, has five USB 3.0 ports, two N64 and two GameCube ports. That means you can put in your native controllers to play these games, which is pretty crazy. I've never seen anything like this before. Uh, a couple USB-C ports, HDMI, Ethernet, and one unique feature that I've never seen on a dock before is that you can actually stick your own hard drive in it. It doesn't come with a hard drive, but just take any hard drive you have. I just looked around and I found I had an extra like 500 gigabyte hard drive just lying around. I think it's also interesting to note, I think that with the dock and the Odin Pro, you're going to have a more powerful machine than the NVIDIA Shield. When it comes to cloud gaming, both of these should be just fine. 
whether you want to run GeForce Now, Stadia, or Xbox Cloud Gaming. So it doesn't really matter what you go with. Obviously, if you just want to do cloud gaming, you don't care about anything else. I'd go for the Odin Lite just for that uh, sweet price point. Uh, the Odin is fairly high risk. You've got AYN, which is a new company. They don't have any proven track record. They haven't produced any handhelds before. Whereas the Steam Deck is low risk. I mean, you're talking about Valve. They're an established company. They've proven in the past they can deliver hardware. If you want to wait for reviews, I totally understand that. Because we don't actually know how well the Odin's going to perform. So just keep that in mind. We look at colors. Obviously the Odin beats out the Steam Deck here in colors. Uh, the Odin Lite has the white, transparent black, transparent white, and cold gray, which looks a whole lot like a Super Nintendo controller. Well, the ones that were distributed in North America, I mean. And you've got the Odin Base and Pro with the black, blue, green, red, and transparent purple. And Steam Deck has black. So I just want to make some quick recommendations for retro gamers. If you want to play with a Wii U, and then maybe some PS3, maybe Switch, get the Steam Deck. You want to play GameCube? Maybe we go for the Odin Baser Pro model. If you just want everything else, maybe some GameCube, then the Odin Lite is your pick. If you just want to play up to like Super Nintendo and PlayStation 1, I personally would actually recommend the RG350M. And that's because of the, uh, the 480p screen. And if you want to play uh, a primarily Game Boy Advance, I'd go with the RG351P or the RG351M. Because those screens have a 3.2 aspect ratio making them perfect for those games. As for modern gamers, I think this is pretty obvious. If you're a PC gamer, go with a Steam Deck. Android gamer, go for the Odin, for the base or the Pro, depending on how uh, power hungry your games are. If you want to primarily play iPhone games with the controller, I'd say the Backbone 1 is your best bet. It kind of turns your iPhone into a console-like experience. And for cloud gaming, definitely say the Odin Lite. That's all you need. Alright, thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, it helps a lot, and share this with your friends. So, I'm just curious now, are you getting an Odin? Are you getting a Steam Deck? Are you waiting? Do you want to see some reviews first? Or are you just diving right in? Because this is the handheld you've been waiting for. Alright, have a good one. Catch you next time.